let's turn to this. Every Friday, we always come up with quick debates. Let's check what we have tonight. I'm telling you, this is the quick debate. Go or stay? Yes or no? Manchester United plagues. Is it the players or the owners or the board? Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. I'm going to start off with you, Nubian Prince. Nubian Prince. Should we sack this man? People are saying it's all over social media. I'm going to start off with you, Nubian Prince. What's your position on this? Can you have to can turn out stay? Yeah. Or he has to go? Yes or no? Talk to me, Nubian Prince. You're alive. For me, for me, if Manchester United actually want to make progress, Benio. they should think of firing. The fear of oh, who is going to replace Ten Hag, I don't think that should be the concern at the ah. moment. Because for me, Ten Hag has really messed up. That's the honest truth. M- Manchester United have manager problem. They have player problem. And it's not as if he came in the summer, I would have excused him and said, okay, he needs time to build it. But this guy has spent money. This guy, cumulatively, I think he has signed at least eight players. So for me, that is enough. To actually build your identity mm. and in manchester united are not making progress they're not going forward then i don't mm. know this was the same guy that brought in johnny evans in the summer i asked myself what was he thinking you said the guy was not good enough you really instigated the idea of them you know withdrawing the contract you brought in onana and the guy has been leaking goals the guy mm. don't the guy don't yet to create an image right i mean so you start asking yourself that well what's actually the point so for me, I think my is for me. He has gotten to that, you know, ceiling. I don't think he can he can break the roof really. I don't think he can get. I don't think I can take my youth to the next level because he yeah, started talking about I cannot play the higher star because I don't have the kind of players for me. We, those are flimsy excuses. You were the one that brought in Anthony. You were the one that brought in Casemiro. You were the one that brought in Ireland. Mm. I mean, so so he does not really have any excuse. If he cannot deliver, I think my youth needs to look beyond him for redemption all right thank you so much that's going to be a prince for you i'm going to switch over to this man to this man robbie robbie you are going to talk to me go or stay for this great man eric tenag the matches uh, United i mean i, I, I think you should go i th- i think you should go i think you should go because um oh, oh, oh. uh w- what was the reason why united wanted a manager they wanted a manager with a different perspective to playing football and i can say that since the Alex Ferguson project, as it is, which saw him stay in the club for over 30 years, are uh, failed with uh, David Moyes, the club has been struggling. United are not your typical club that signs managers or change managers like Chelsea. Chelsea are more or less a club that changes managers almost every season or almost every two seasons or three seasons. United are not that kind of club. United is the kind of club that is loyal to one manager. But since David Moyes failed that test and of course results went abysmally wrong under his charge united have been having issues in terms of managers that come into the club and if you look down the line you have about five managers that passed through united in the past 10 years which is on manchester united like for eric ten Hag, this is one man that has four or flattered to deceive since the beginning of the season and i said it on our on our past episodes after that match against Wolverhampton wanderers i said that united would struggle because United won that match on the stroke of luck. United did not play one thing positive to have warranted all three points in that game. But I'm wonder should have gotten a penalty. But unfortunately, VAR went to sleep that night. So I think for every turn, huh, this is a manager that his man-to-man management is a suspect. Secondly, he cannot transmit his ideas to the player. There is no energy flowing from the side of the pitch whenever the team is playing, that transmits to the team. There is no, there is no such telepathy. So th- there is also a problem. The kind of players he has signed has also been an issue. And I said it as well, that for a manager who has been so loyal to the players who played for him when he was at, um, when he was at Ajax, it yeah. tells you that there is a problem as well. Why would I, why would I sign an Andrew Onana? Why would I sign an Andrew Onana? When I have Livakovic, the goalkeeper for Croatia, wasting away in the Serie A. When I have other players who I can put my hands on. There is an Ole Watkins at Aston Villa. This is somebody who knows the Premier League in and out. Why will I sign, why will I sign uh, uh, um, Rasmus Holland? Why will I, why will I not go for, for uh, World Prowse? This is somebody who knows the Premier League in and out as a midfielder and as a dead ball specialist. 
United don't have this kind of players. And these are the kind of things you look out for as a manager. What player, one-on-one, -on, -one, on a bad day, when the team is not playing well, can bring a rabbit out of the hat and win me vital points. United don't have such players. And unfortunately, in, in the, the way things are going for the club, where you have a Marcus Rashford, who has failed to fire at a gas, talkless of the cylinder itself, then there's a problem. Because you need a team where everybody can contribute. Look at Real Madrid, for instance. Look at how many vital goals that Jude Bellingham has scored for them. The El Clasico one by Real Madrid was courtesy of that young man. He is not a striker. He is a midfielder. But he has been able to contribute his own quota of the goals for the team. Hence where they are right now. For United, aside for uh, Marcos Rashford, who else can come up on a good day and deliver the goods for United? Nobody. So hence why, for me, this manager is a suspect. He has to go. And of course, United better look very well before they leave. Because if they go and get another manager again, well, I guess the misery will be 10 times 10 of what they're having right now. Yay! This guy, the vex. I'm telling you. This guy says, Eric Tenag. Robbie said, Eric Tenag. For Nagbe, out. He has to go. He has to go. Now, let me call on. Uh, I'm still, uh, let me call on Irate. Irate is a Liverpool fan. Let's hear him. What's he going to say? I'm telling you, I know what he's going to say. He has to stay. He has to stay. Talk to me, Irate. Oh, my God. Um, I mean, you can make a case for Ten Hag and a case for the owners and a case for um, the players as well. But I'd rather make a case against the players because we keep saying Ten Hag this, Ten Hag that. These players are professionals. They all signed professional contracts and they have played under several managers. Now, they talked about Anthony Marshall yesterday in um, a program I was watching. He's been there for nine years. What is he doing at Man United for nine years? He has played under several managers and is still a 28 year old promising player mm. as 28 going on 29. Mm. So, at some point, how long are we going to keep throwing the managers under the bus? What about the players? When would they start taking responsibility? Mm. Mason Mount was anonymous. Absolutely anonymous. Casemiro went on vacation and came back bloated. And since then, he's yet to even be able to cover any kind of distance in midfield. Mm. Amrabat has not been up to scratch. So, at some point, you need to ask the question, what is going on with these players? And like I said, many of these same guys have been under several managers from Van Gaal to Mourinho to Soja to Rangnick, under several managers. So how long are we going to keep saying it is the managers? When will we start focusing on the players? For Mr. Tenag himself, mm. I have to say that he has brought in some of those players that we just mentioned, like Anthony and Onana and um, even Amrabat. Mart Martinez. Yeah. Martinez. I mean, those are, those, you know, he has his first stress bike line right now injured. So, you know, you can give him a pass for that because if the likes of one Bisaka, Varane, Martinez, and Shaw were around, they would definitely be starting. And I don't think results will be this bad. So right now, the team is lacking character, is lacking personality. I've said this several times, Bruno Fernandes is not fit to be a captain. Mm. On his day, he Why? can be inspirational, score the odd goal. Mm. But on another day, he doesn't know how to pull the team in the right direction when they start to down to. He is always complaining. He came on in the match in the Carling Cup game against Newcastle, and all he did was rant at the referee for whatever amount of minutes he was on the pitch for. He didn't do anything, absolutely nothing. Hmm. Marcus Rashford last season, I remember seeing this as a man you fans were all oh, saying, Oh, this, I'm just beefing this, that, 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 this rivalry. Go and look at him over the season. This man has never been consistent. He delivers one season and the next season is anonymous. So, Eric Tenag himself has to take responsibility for some of the players that he has brought in that has not performed. Then what is the plan? He's saying, he's throwing the players under the bus, saying that they cannot adapt to the style from Ajax. Well, you've been there for your second season now. We are yet to see that style. And if you say they cannot adapt, who is bringing in these players? You are responsible for some of these players. You brought in Anthony, like I said. You brought him into the club. You brought in Rasmus Oiland, who is yet to score a goal. Mm. So, who is making these decisions? And that takes us to the owners. There is no football director at Manchester United right now. 
Yes, who is in charge of making this? Who is bringing in these players? Does Tenag have a say in bringing these players? And also, if you criticize the owners, let's remember that Ferguson under the same owners won five league titles and a Champions League under the same Glazers we are talking about. So, you can make a case for everyone, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to if Ten Hag cannot get his team performing to the expected level for a team like Manchester United, then I think by sometime in December, if results don't improve, I think he mm. might be shown the door. Mm. And people are already touting the to take over from him. But whatever the case is, everyone has to take responsibility more. The owners, Ten Hag himself and the players. All right, that's that, that's that, that's that from Irates. I'm switching over to Bishop. Talk to me. Can we have something? Can we have something from you about Manchester United? Is this going to stay or it should go? Uh, from your own point of view, talk to me, bro. Okay, so everybody have said uh, you should go, but this is the, the bitter truth there is even if the not goes, this trouble will not go away. There's a problem with Man U. And he's more than the coach. Yes, he has his own... He has like 50% of the blame. His man management is bad. His signings are bad. And the only reason why I'm supporting him to go is because he has lost the dressing room. The last mm. time I was on the show, they played Bradford and they started scoring for 93rd minutes. And I said in that matter, that was the man that saved him. They should have lost that man and they would have packed his, his load. But people said, no... Even as a fan, you should always want your team to win. The, the the problem is that they are struggling to win some matches, which is still giving people hope. There's no hope in this in this manager. Not that he's a bad manager. In fact, I believe he's better than Ateta, which I believe. Oh, to wow. wow. Yes, wow. he's better. But when you are in this condition, even if Ateta comes now, if Guardiola comes now, he cannot just, wa- just wave the magic wand and everything works. There are still some fundamental problems with Man U. So, because he has lost the dressing room, that's the reason. And because his poor management and his poor purchase of player, those three things are unforgivable. So, he has to go. He has to go. For, for the players, the same Rashford everybody is complaining about. The last match that England played, go and watch Rashford. Is it not that same Rashford that played that match? Hmm. Was it not that same Rashford that was almost nominated as man of the match? Was it not him passing the ball, scoring the goal, assisting players? Is it not that same Rashford in Man U? So it becomes like he has lost the dressing room. They are not playing for him again. He mm. can go fine. I'm not against it that he should go. But he's a good manager. I'm not saying he should go because he's a bad manager. No. He's a very good manager. But right now, is the wrong time for him to be the manager of the club. His it's, it's, it's treatment to other players... Like Ronaldo, Sancho, I think those players, the other players didn't take it to like, uh, likely with him. If he goes, you start seeing many secrets comes up. You start seeing many things coming up from other people. So, it's just, don't bother what they bring in. The mm. person cannot do magic for now. They will have to still do the foundation, the fundamental things. So, mm. I'm sorry, uh, Tehang, you have to go. Oh my goodness, that's Bishop. He said he has to go. Uh, Kole, I'm turning over to you right now. Maybe you have a different mentality to this. Maybe different opinion to this. Talk to me, Kole. Um, yeah, I do. And I am going to say that Ten Hag should stay 100%. I mean, I have not seen any reason why this man should go. Because and the reason why I've said he should not, he should, why he should not go, I think Bishop has clearly mentioned all those things you see united have a foundational problem you see it's not just about the players the mentality in the club is not right see even those who are in administration eh, who are in let me say those who hold off field positions let's say even people who are in the marketing department who are probably you know all those maybe you know non-playing staff i can bet with you that these guys even the mentality these people have they probably not have the you know they don't have the mentality of a winner of a champion so i guess even back even backstage things will just be happening anything at old trafford compare that to a place like real madrid look at real madrid can you tell me that real madrid have great players look at how danny cavalier is playing look at nacho nacho is a fringe player but when that guy comes on they give him the armband 
and you see how he plays because he has been there for long. He understands how it is to win. Jude Bellingham came from Borussia Dortmund, where look at how they lost the title. You can't say Borussia for me. Borussia Dortmund is not a serious club. But look at how he has entered into into Real Madrid, and he see the me monster mentality he's putting yeah. on. So the thing is this: Ten Hag, I think Ten Hag is trying. He he is trying to. He has been trying to want to put that mentality into those players. But the problem is, you know, when there is a lot of rot, uh, when there is... Okay, you understand? What about, when what, what, what about power... Play, uh, power, uh, power yeah, those players. are the kind of things... Those are the kind of things he was trying to play. Because don't forget that player power was what led to the dismissal of play, people like Mourinho. Simply Mourinho, because, yes. because he benched Paul Pogba. Look at Cristiano Ronaldo. Because you brought him on in the 88th minute, he's throwing throwing tantrums so it doesn't matter look at Jurgen Klopp you see sometimes when Jurgen Klopp will, okay Salah Salah might want to Salah might show his displeasure or not but it ends there and you don't see Salah now trying to you know maybe want to want uh, maybe want to have a problem with Klopp and all those things even when there was an issue between Mani and Salah you saw how Klopp how 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 Klopp attacked you you don't you don't see even Man City you mm -hmm. see as good as Haaland is. You see sometimes when when Pep is shouting at Haaland and all. Is Haaland now going to come out and say he's going? To... These are the kind of things Ten Hag is going to do. And it is going to take extremely extra effort because you don't understand. This is a club that is very rotten. As in rotten to the core. That's why I said even those, even non-playing staff, mm -hmm. I am very yeah. sure they too, they have very terrible attitude. It is probably not just the players. That thing is even down to administrative positions. So it's going to take a lot. So I feel Ten Hag is taking a lot of sacrifice because do you know what it means to come from a very organized setting yeah. like Ajax? Ajax is one of the most organized teams in Europe and that is why they have had success over the years. That is why they still have a name till today. Is it not the same Ten Hag now that left that look at the club, how they are in shambles and yeah. all and so forth? So Ten Hag is a good person and he means well, but the problem is player power. You see the case with Sancho and all. You saw what happened with Ronaldo yeah. and all of that. Kule, Kule, wait. Kule, wait. If you, are, if you are citing player power, if you are citing player power, are there yeah. not better players, bigger players in other clubs who are behaving and respecting themselves? Look at Jude Bellingham now. He came all the way from... He, wait, miss, wait, wait for me. Wait for me. Let me make you understand something. Because you make it look like as if... You make it look like as if the coach is held at gunpoint. And when, when, when they come out in public, everybody does tend to play nice with him. This is a coach that has not been able to put his foot on the ground. And look at the way he has been... Look at the, look at the relationship between himself and players. As, as, have, there been, have there not been issues in Liverpool uh, between Sané San, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, and so on so and so forth? How, those, did those managers, those ma how did those managers manage those situations? That is what we are talking about. The, the culture in Holland and was right, was very the culture in those places was not toxic. So when there is an issue, it is very easy. Didn't you, mm. didn't, didn't you hear what I said, Robbie? I said Man United's problem is even off the pitch, even the culture within, even the culture within, let me say, that was what I said, like administrative staff and all the non-playing staff is also going to be rotten. So everywhere in Manchester, you, you don't understand it. That is what. So you don't understand. Ten Hag is like a good person who is trying to who is trying to change all the bad by himself, and it's coming back to bite him. It's a very very difficult thing. I don't understand why people are not see, trying to see this thing because mm. you all forget that when Ole Gunnar Soja was there, what was the one thing Soja was blamed? They said Soja's man management was kind of good. But what was the crux of it? They said he gave them too much leeway. That was why they were doing anyhow. And at a point, they, that was why he couldn't have control. Why wouldn't a manager have a control of the dressing room? That is what Ten Hag is saying. Somebody, somebody, somebody is not doing well in training. Somebody is somebody stays up late to play video games, and you are saying he should handle it with kid gloves. Can they do that in Liverpool or Manchester City? Bros, bros, please. I will ask you one question, Kelly. Sorry, I'm cutting you short. I will ask you one question. As a manager of a player like Anthony, what will you tell him? This is one player that has not done anything significant since he came to that club. Anthony. Now, yes, you, if you are his manager, Anthony, what, what will you tell him in the build-up to a match if you are his manager? Now, Anthony, 
Yeah. In the case of Anthony, my own the way I would view Anthony is that look, Anthony is a player who is still very raw. Because let's not forget, it's not like Anthony is very old. He's just, I think, 21 or 22. This is a guy who he has lived in Brazil all his life. In Europe, he has not spent even up, I don't think he has spent up to three years combined in Europe. So I see <laughs> more of see, let's say environment thing and yeah. all and stuff like that. Because don't forget, look at it. He was coming, he did well in IAPS, but he's coming into an environment where there is.